One of the things that Rick Santorum proposed while running for president, back when it looked like he might have a real chance at the nomination, uh, was that we should kind of sell Idaho. Uh, this is what it was like this year in the Republican primary. This was the difference between the two main alternatives to Mitt Romney in the Republican Party. Newt Gingrich wanted to acquire the moon as the 51st state in the union, not kidding. Uh, Rick Santorum, on the other side, wanted to divest ourselves of most of Idaho. All the federally controlled land in Idaho he wanted to sell. Now, Rick Santorum is not going to be the Republican nominee for president, but imagine that he was. In fact, I think this is a useful thought experiment. Imagine that Rick Santorum not only got nominated, but he won the general election. Imagine President Santorum. And imagine that as President Santorum, he decided to follow through on his campaign promise to sell Idaho, to sell off the federally owned, publicly owned parts of that state. And as president, President Rick Santorum decides that he's going to figure out what the taxpayers have spent on those lands, what our public national investment has been there. And then he's going to sell that land for 99% off that price, essentially giving it away, 99% off. And then... After he's done being president and done selling off our national property for cheap, now that he is an ex-president, he's going to go into business with the new owner of Idaho. He's going to go into business with the person he sold our land to, with a scheme to make money off that property that he sold for pennies on the dollar. He's now got himself on both sides of the deal that took what we owned... We got paid 1% of what we'd put into it, but he's now going to get rich off it personally based on what he did in office. That would be, that would be crazy, right? I mean, that, that would be even crazier than just the idea of President Rick Santorum. There's not going to be a President Rick Santorum. But that process that I just described really has just happened in Michigan, in Pontiac, Michigan, a city that may be more notable these days for what it has lost than for what it still has. The Detroit Lions used to play in Pontiac's Silverdome Arena. They left. Uh, the GM truck factory in town left. GM used to make the car called Pontiac here, but that's gone too, the factory and the whole brand. The city of Pontiac, Michigan is so broke, so down on its luck, that three years ago, the state of Michigan appointed an emergency manager with nearly unilateral authority to run the town. The Los Angeles Times at the time suggested thinking of that emergency manager as something of an unelected king. After a few months on the job, that unelected king decided to sell Pontiac's biggest asset, the publicly owned Pontiac Silverdome. He decided to sell it in 2009, in the middle of the worst downswing of the Great Recession. When the emergency manager proposed auctioning off this public asset, the Pontiac City Council said basically, are you crazy? You're going to try to sell this thing in this economy? It is the worst possible time to sell. They voted against it unanimously. But in Michigan, once the state takes over your city with an emergency manager, the elected officials have no power anymore. The Pontiac City Council's unanimous vote against selling the Silverdome meant zero, meant zip. The unelected king, the emergency manager guy, put it up for sale anyway, despite that vote. He put it up for sale with ads like this one. The field has seen monster truck rallies, soccer games. If it can happen on a field, it can happen here. Out here at Silverdome, we have anything ranging from your dirt shows, Snowcross shows, home and garden shows, trade shows, concerts, all the way down to anything you would like to do on top of a football field. Soccer, flag football, indoor football, arena football. Uh, you could have lacrosse down there. Up to anything you want and more will help you. That was the message from the uh, emergency manager as he sold the Publix Silverdome. Of course, if the new owner has other ideas for Silverdome and the land on which it stands, the city of Pontiac says they are fully supportive. The reason we want to sell without reserve is that we don't want to exclude any potential bidders. We want people to think out of the box, to be as creative as possible, to use this site for the, the best possible use that they would like to bring forward. This is an excellent location and will be a great value for potential bidders. Citizens of Pontiac had spent about $55 million dollars building the Silverdome in the mid-1970s. In 2009, under the genius no-reserve auction idea, in the middle of the worst part of the recession, the arena sold for just over half of $1 million to a Canadian real estate zillionaire. He paid 1% of what it cost Pontiac to build it. And still, the Silverdome sat mostly empty for years. 
Last month, that emergency manager, the guy who sold it, that emergency manager's name surfaced again in Pontiac. The local paper reports on an effort to expand casino gambling in Michigan, including at Pontiac Silverdome. They're trying to get an amendment on the ballot in November so they can turn the Pontiac Silverdome, now owned by the Canadian zillionaire, into a casino for him. Among the people trying to bring the casino gambling to Silverdome is the former emergency manager, the guy who sold Pontiac Silverdome for a song and who now represents in business the Canadian guy he sold it to with whom he is now working to pass the gambling amendment. So metaphorically speaking, back to the thought experiment here, this would be like fake President Santorum using his power as president to sell Idaho for 99% off, and now he's in business with the guy he sold it to for a song, and now they can use that land to get rich themselves off of it. Pontiac used to have a thing called the Silverdome. One guy made the decision to give it away for basically no money, and now he is in business to make some real money off it privately for himself. Heh, <laughs> suckers. A spokeswoman for this former emergency manager tells us that he met the new owner of the Silver Dome, the Canadian zillionaire guy, only after he sold him the stadium. She says the emergency manager is only, has only been working for the guy now since January. She also says the casino will be great for Pontiac. They'll get tax revenue from it. Maybe this historic sale of a huge, important public asset was a great deal for Pontiac. The best way to sell it at the best price, the best opportunity, I can't say. That's something for the people of Pontiac to decide. It's their asset. It belongs to them. But they did not get a say. They did not get a vote on that. They, at their city council, got the opportunity to have a meaningless, symbolic protest vote because the state took away their power to decide things for themselves. When the city council took that symbolic, unanimous vote not to sell the Silver Dome, you know, they actually predicted almost exactly how little the stadium would sell for in a no-reserve open auction. They were right. But their foresight and their vote meant nothing because the state had given one guy unilateral authority to do whatever he wanted with the assets of Pontiac. And what he wanted to do, it turns out, may end up being a great deal for him. And it's not just this one town. Pontiac and Detroit and a lot of other places in Michigan have trouble, major financial trouble. But why is the solution to those problems to get rid of democracy, to get rid of elected officials, to get rid of the quaint American idea that we vote for elected officials to represent us, to make decisions about what is best for our towns? Why is unilateral authority by one person better? Is democracy a problem in America now? Is it a bad system of government? Is it too risky when the going gets rough? Does it only work in rich places? Is Pontiac better off for having its fate in the hands of the guy who made this deal instead of the city council that wouldn't have done it this way? Earlier this year, these Michiganders turned in enough signatures in a petition drive to put Republican Governor Rick Snyder's radically expanded emergency manager law up for a citizen's repeal. Then last month, Republicans on a state elections board threw those hundreds of thousands of signatures out. They said they could not be sure that the type was large enough. They could not be sure that the font size on one part of the petition might, not, uh, might be uh, big enough. And so with worrying about that, they decided to throw out all those signatures. Doesn't matter that they got enough. The group trying to overturn the new radically expanded emergency manager law in Michigan is going to get a hearing on their appeal on the signatures issue next week before a panel of elected judges. The case people in Michigan tell us will almost surely end up in the state Supreme Court, where the judges are elected and they come with party ties. As if their struggle were not hard enough, Michigan's Republican governor, Rick Snyder, has now filed a friend of the court brief telling the court to protect the emergency manager law that he says he considers central to his governance. If the people are allowed to vote on what happens to them, that is apparently in the way of what he wants to do in Michigan, what he wants to do to Michigan, what he wants to do for Michigan for their own good.